Okay, hi there folks. This is uh, Conan of Samaria in my YouTube debut. Um, I thought I'd just make a brief video on some of the things that bother me about many Minecraft builds and uh, attempt to show what I've done differently. So uh, here we have the small town of uh, Gamalbro, Gamalbro, uh, Old Bridge. Um, so, you know, creatively named because there is in fact an old bridge. Um, it's meant to be uh, a, a small, typical sort of farming town, as one might expect to see somewhere in uh, Scandinavia, particularly Sweden, in the uh, early modern period. So I'm just going to comment on uh, some things that I've noticed about a lot of people's YouTube builds, and uh, you know, comment on what I've tried to do differently if I if I didn't if I didn't uh, agree with uh, you know the the history behind it. So first and foremost. Um, Fields. You can see we've got a, a lot of large fields around here, um, and, and so many people neglect to build them, or they'll just you know have a little the, the size of these vegetable patches and uh, full of uh, grain, and then they'll suppose that that'll be able to feed, uh, you know, you know, feed their their population for the huge towns or whatever. So um, historically, in a northern European context, um, the, you know, the in the early Middle Ages. Uh, there's this concept of um, the hide, which was a land division, usually around a hundred acres or so, and that was uh, deemed necessary to support one household, so one extended family of, you know, I don't know maybe 10, 15 people, something like that. Um, and it was used for census purposes, so it's not a very precise measurement. A hundred, a uh, hundred acres is, uh, you know, a, a rough, um, a rough idea of what it would take. And, uh, of course, throughout the period, there were farming improvements, uh, particularly after you know, the uh, you know, particularly after the sort of uh, renaissance of the 12th century, I suppose, and more so after the uh, Black Death and so forth. So, so there were, um, you know, sort of an early agricultural revolution underway, so uh, improved farming methods, you know, um, irrigation, of course, not necessary here, but uh, crop rotation, that was hugely important, allowing fields to sit fallow. Uh, so on and so forth, which did, uh, you know, allow for an increase in productivity, which did allow for less land to sustain a larger population. But nonetheless, um, lots of Minecraft players really don't go far enough in the fields. So here you can see for my town, we've got one, two, three, four uh, separate fields. And I'm going to uh, going to increase that as well. So I was thinking of adding at least another one, two, three fields for a grand total of about uh, seven, maybe another eighth one here. Not here, this will be the churchyard. Um, so that's going to still actually be really not very much. It'll be uh, enough perhaps to feed uh, the inhabitants of this village in real life, although I'm still a little skeptical of that, but you know, there's some compression just for playability purposes. Um, so yeah, really guys, plant more fields, <laughs> it's important. All right, um, vegetable gardens. So these are obviously not the fields. These are right nearby the houses, and we have uh, carrots and potatoes. So uh, you can get whatever you like. Um, worthy of note, uh, potatoes were not the staple crop in the Middle Ages, and uh, really actually until the 19th century, when there was sort of a concerted push to get people to produce potatoes instead. They were, of course, an American import, and um, you know had somewhat limited acceptance initially. So, but uh, by the by the you know, 18th early 18th century, when uh, when this this build is is set, you could certainly expect to see some potatoes, but they wouldn't be the staple crop. So, you know, they'd be used as maybe a soup vegetable or something like that. So, I mean, here you can see we got small plots um, adjoining the various houses, um, and so that's that's about what you'd expect. Um, and uh, of course, carrots. You know, maybe uh, you'd have other herb gardens or such like, but there's not really any good way to represent them here. So, what can you do? Um, oh, right. Uh, keeping animals. So uh, often you would um, expect to see sort of a common ground or a grazing area where where all people could keep their animals. Uh, this becomes less prevalent later on in the period with uh, land enclosure, and where uh, you know the increasing efforts by the nobility to uh, control the land to, you know, you see an erosion of the traditional rights of the peasantry. So I'm not really sure what the situation would have been here in uh, 18th century Sweden, so I'm going to bridge the issue by just not having very many animals. But it's another question of scale as well. If you do build um, animal 
uh, you know, animal containment or whatever. Um, make sure it's very, very large. Uh, cows and pigs and so forth, but particularly cows, need a tremendous amount of land to graze off of. So uh, don't be stingy with that if you're going for realism. Um, also worthy of note is that you need to, of course, feed these animals over the winter. So you should have a hay field of some sort. I'm not sure how you'd represent that, perhaps with reeds or, uh, or the two-block tall grass. I'm playing in 1.6.4, so um, that's not an option for me. But that would be something, uh, something you could do. And a substantial amount, actually, of the land that uh, you know would be used for farming would actually be set aside just for fodder for the animals over the winter. So. Do bear that in mind. Right, uh, next up, housing. So these are meant to be log cabins, actually. Um, which, uh, interestingly enough, uh, you know, of course, for many people, they're associated with early America or, you know, the pioneers, settlers. Um, they're actually a specifically Scandinavian design. So they were introduced to the Americas by uh, Scandinavian settlers, probably uh, Swedes or particularly Finns, the so-called forest Finns. Um, after uh, after settlement in the um, the early uh, Swedish colony of Nyasveria, which was um, well in the uh, 17th century, and uh, it was Sweden's attempt at joining all of its you know fellow colonial powers, which you know, unfortunately didn't work out very well. It was captured by the Dutch, I think, in the 1680s. But the lasting impact around the Delaware was that they did introduce log cabins, and uh, in fact. Uh, this building right here with the porch is a sort of a loose replica of uh, one of the one of the older buildings still standing in North America, a uh, or a Swedish log cabin. So you can see they're very simple buildings. We've just got a, a fireplace and um, a little uh, loft up here. This fireplace really is grotesquely too big for the size of the building, but I, I don't know what else to do with it besides maybe using a a lit furnace, which I don't like so much either, so that's the best we can do. Um, by this period, there will be have been fireplaces um, to judge from, you know, existing buildings, and also this this entire town is based on an illustration from uh, Suecia Hodie et Antiquierna, uh, Sweden in Antiquity and Today, which was a huge book of patriotic engravings commissioned in like the uh, 18th century by you know someone who wanted to. 17th century, sorry, by, uh, by a Swedish uh, engraver who wanted to demonstrate that uh, his country was great too, and that Sweden could be just as important as anywhere else. So, And uh, in those illustrations, you do see chimneys implying fireplaces. But uh, in the earlier period, you know, you see people, you know, like, or in Skyrim or you know, other popular video games like that certainly don't help with this, uh, this impression that fireplaces were the norm, which isn't true. Um, there would be a fire pit, so really just a hole in the ground, um, you know, and then uh, perhaps you know some stones uh, surrounding it in the middle of a building, and then there'd usually just be a sort of hole up in the roof to uh, allow smoke out, perhaps uh, in some cases with a little hatch that could be shut to uh, in the event of inclement weather. Um, so you know, by the by the early modern era, that's not the case anymore. But uh, something to keep in mind: no fireplaces if you're building very early period stuff. Um, oh, right, the other thing here to talk about is that there's, I think, too much glass here. It's hard to tell in many of these illustrations. Uh, you know, the, the early illustrations usually show, you know, buildings from far away, so it's, you know, impressed you with the scale, and they don't really, you know, spend too much detail on the glass. Um, some are, you know, uh, extant buildings do have glass windows, like this, uh, this, this cabin, which I, on which I, well, the original cabin on which I based this, this cabin. Um... Hard to say. Uh, the original cabin did have glass. Oh, it's starting to rain for that real Scandinavian feeling. So the original, the, the cabin, as near as I can tell, did have grass, glass originally. Uh, glass, though, was of course a luxury item at this point in time, so possibly something to shy away from. You might want to consider, rather than glass, um, you know, a, a fence or something like that in its place. Um, uh, I, I do feel justified using it at this point in time also, but in the earlier Middle Ages particularly, you really should stay away from any sort of glass whatsoever. Uh, glass working was just too expensive, just too difficult to, you know, m allow for its uh, mass use. So, what else? Oh, mills. I will have a mill here. Uh, there will be a mill up there. Lots and lots of uh, Minecraft builds have mills um, where I don't think they belong. Uh, they're rather expensive items. Millers were rich people. 
Um, and often, you know, you'd have many small towns or villages without a mill, and people would bring their mill, uh, their their grain, in from far away to uh, to grind. So you wouldn't expect to see a mill everywhere. Uh, certainly, not every household would own their own mill. Um, also, mills are a little bit later than people tend to realize. So, um, you know, in uh, the um, the earliest stages of the of the Middle Ages, uh, people most of Northern Europe was using a uh, Querns, I suppose, or cairns, I'm not quite sure, but it's essentially two flat rocks beneath which you which you place your grain in and, uh, well, grind up. So it's labor-intensive and uh, not much fun, but a little bit, um, but, you know, certainly less mechanically complicated, less of an investment than a proper mill is. So something to bear in mind. Uh, right, also, here we have our church. It's a little um, stave church. Fly around here. Uh, it's in the center of this hill. There will be a churchyard here and a, a little detached bell tower. I'm not sure what you'd call that in English. In Swedish, it's apparently a Glockenstapel, and in German, it is a Glockenstapel. But uh, in English, I have not been able to find the word. But uh, you wouldn't have a, uh, a bell tower in many of these stave churches or whatever. Um, uh, connected directly to the building, like you might expect to see elsewhere. So, but this is really uh, so. I, I've seen pictures in uh, in Russia and Scandinavia, and uh, Germany of this kind of detached bell tower. So, that's what I'm going to be building. Anyway, here we have the uh, interior of this church. Uh, it's rather simple, as you can see, uh, very small. So here we have the pulpit, the altar, uh, this um, rod, I guess, standing in for a cross. The original, uh, which is based, this is based on a uh, small. Uh, the, the only surviving stave church, stave church uh, construction in, um, <coughs> in Sweden. Of course, most of them are in Norway. Um, and so the original on which this is based is richly decorated, as are many of them, with, uh, with carvings and with, uh, with paintings, which is really not an option in uh, vanilla Minecraft, unfortunately. I suppose you could get creative with maps. You know, there's some map utilities you can use them as paintings. But um, I don't know. I'm not such a... You know, maybe something to do later. But um, anyway, it's rather small, as you can see. It's, you know, it's a, a village church, limited funding available. Um, yeah, so something else to, to build. Although, again, don't go overboard with it. Not every town did have its own church. Sometimes people would need to come from a ways away to get to churches. All that became less and less of, a, of an issue later on. Oh, hey. Go away. Recording my YouTube video. Right. Well, um, I... I think that about sums up everything that I wanted to gripe about with, you know, problems in many people's builds. So uh, to reiterate really briefly, fields, make them large, make them plentiful. Um, potatoes. Well, I, I don't, haven't seen too many people using potatoes as a staple food, but you know, don't even consider it in an earlier period. Um, what else? Let's see. Uh, how's log cabins suitable for Scandinavia or early America? Not elsewhere. Don't even think about it. Um, don't build them too large either. These are rather small constructions. Uh, mills, not too many of them. Yeah, follow your bliss. All right. Thanks everyone for watching. Sorry, this has been an unstructured ramble, but uh, well, what can you do? All right. Catch you later.